Hi, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to record your first song on Studio One. I'm going to show you how to record on audio tracks, how to set up MIDI tracks and instrument tracks, and how to start recording using your own keyboard if you've got one. I'll also show you how to uh, record using your audio interface and how to set up it properly and how to set your monitors up properly as well. So without further ado, let's get to the video. So I've opened a new session on Studio One. They've got a lot of templates, but you can just go with the recording and the mixing template. And this is what it looks like when you open uh, one of those templates. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is just click on the top left corner and go to preferences. The Mac users can just hit command comma, and then you're going to go to audio configurations. So here on the recording device, you're going to select your audio interface. If it's connected through USB, Thunderbolt, any connection, it should be able to detect it here. Mine is audio box USB. I'm not gonna connect that one because I am recording with another driver for this video, but you guys go ahead and select the audio interface you've got connected to your computer, both for the reproduction devices and for the recording devices. Once you've done that, you can change the buffer size here and you can change it and set and just leave it. But as you go in the production or in the mixing session, you're probably gonna have to be changing this a little bit. Basically, and just to put that very quickly, cause we'd have a lot to talk about in another video, but the lower the buffer size is, the better it is for you to record vocals and to be monitoring what you are playing and inputting to the DAW. So let's say you have a beat, you want to record some vocals on top of the beat, probably going with a lower buffer size is far better because you're going to have less latency. So I would say that 128 is a good number if that's what you're planning to do. However, the downside of this is, yes, you've got less latency, it's better to record, but if you are using a lot of CPU, a lot of instruments, a lot of third-party plugins, your computer is not going to take this low buffer size. So you're just basically going to have to bring it up as you go until you com your computer starts crashing on that buffer size and you have to go higher. So like I said, there's many ways that you can go around this, but it's probably not for this video. So the standard for you to leave this on to start with is 512. And then as you go, like I said, you may wish to bring it down a little bit to record some vocals, or you may just leave it where it is if your computer is coping fine and is not crashing. And then the sample rate, if you go to song configurations here, you can change the sample rate. I'll just leave it on 48,000, uh, 48 kilohertz, sorry. And there's like higher, just depending on your interface. Mine, it's as far as it goes. It's an old interface, but you can just, if you leave it on 44.1 kilohertz, it's also fine, but I'll just leave it on 48. And 24 bits resolution is also kind of standard, so you can leave it there for, this, for the moment. Just click OK. And then let's go back to Preferences and let's set up your MIDI keyboard. I'm going to delete mine so that we can set it up together. So you're going to add here on the left bottom corner and then you're going to find many keyboards here. Hopefully yours is among these. If not, you're going to set up a new keyboard on the top. You're going to say the maker, which is M Audio, and then you're going to name it your keyboard name. And mine is Keystation 49. Receiving from, you're going to select your keyboard. And if it is connected either via USB or MIDI, your computer should be recognizing it at this stage. It's just important that you connect it before you open the session. And then it asks you if you want to filter after touch, program change, pitch bend and controllers, which depending on the keyboard, you may or may not have these. I'm just going to tick that for mine and just going to hit OK. OK again, and we should be all set. Now you've placed some keys in your keyboard. If you look at this lower left corner, you can see some orange lights turning on. So that is saying that your computer is receiving the MIDI you're playing. So we're good to go. Now let's add the first audio track. If we click on plus and for Mac users, you can just click on T 
and it just brings this window and then you go to audio I'm going to name this vocal you can add three four how many you want I'll just add one and then you're gonna say it's a mono and every vocal track that you are recording it's obviously a mono input so you're going to select mono and then click OK so first thing here as you can see the record button and the monitoring button they are gray so I can't engage them I can't record because like I have said I have the, the screen um, recording device connected not my actual interface so that will be the reason why I can't do this but you guys should be able to go here on this little arrow and see the inputs of your interface if you don't you're going to go command comma again to preferences and then depending on your interface you're going to click on preferences and once again it won't allow me because of this but you will be able to see the inputs of your interface and select if you want them as mono or if you want them as stereo and if you guys still have questions we can speak about this again in another future video so if this was ready to go after you had selected your input you could just arm it to record and then you can you could click here on the bottom and it would automatically start recording so another important thing that I want to tell you is the tempo let's say you want to start a track in 80 beats per minute you just change it there it automatically changes everything for for that tempo and then if you hit C that's um, your metronome the click so if I start playing the track you should be able to hear the click If you hit C again, it's going to stop. Okay, the metronome is very important if you want to be uh, on time when you're recording your um, guitars, vocals, whatever it is. So now I've got a vocal, let's say I want a piano. You click on the plus sign again, you go to instrument, you're going to name it piano and just click okay. But now, okay, I've got a piano track, which is an instrument track I am playing and it's receiving MIDI but there's no actual piano plugin in there so what you can do is on the right lower corner on navigate if you go to instruments right here you've got the PreSonus instruments and you may have other instruments that you've installed them yourself so I'm just gonna go with the PreSonus instruments you can drag presence for example to the track or you can drag presence to the screen like anywhere in the screen and it will create a new track okay so that's command Z to undo and now that I've dragged presence to this piano track I can click on the little piano icon over there I can go to pattern right here and I can select what sound I want and I want a ballad piano for example you double click on it <laughs> should be able to listen that's pretty cool very good you can just select anything else you can select some strings let's say I want this cello staccato or this tremolo pretty cool they've got a good good sample library if you want to use their sounds and so let's say I want to record a acoustic piano medium I'm going to engage my metronome on C I'm going to hit record and just make sure the record button is engaged on this track and so as the monitoring so that you can hear back what you're playing and then let's set the cursor right here and let's click on record and that's it and now let's say for example that I want to be listening to what I've just recorded on a loop so if you hover on top here you can see that 
automatically it kind of like shows you a little pencil. So you just drag what you want to be listening to. You click on the loop button right here at the bottom. Let me just adjust this. And then you let's take the, the click out and just hit space. And you should be able to play on a loop. Okay, so this is a pretty cool feature because let's say you want to be listening to the chorus and recording as you go so you just can loop it and then you will record and then as as you go like new tracks on top of each other so i won't teach you how to set up more instruments because the, pro the process is just the same you click plus and then you say you want some drums um, that's okay and then you just drag impact and then you can select um, keyboard as well um, and you can just hit record and then you can record so now let's say you've got a whole song done and you're happy with the result and you want to be mixing it so you're gonna click on the mixer here and the mixer pops up um, you can like add you're only seeing your instruments um, at the moment you're seeing here the, the master faders on your right. They will always be on your right, the, the master fader, the, the last fader. Um, and let's say you want to group some instruments together. You right click and you add a bus channel. So, and you can actually drag the bus channel. Uh, actually, you can't, and I'll tell you why. If you go to the little wrench here on the left, um, there is oh here we are so on the bottom it says keep bus channels to the right untick that one and then you can actually drag your bus let's say i want to color all of this um red and you're going to say that you want these two instruments their output to be bus one and now on this bus you're going to be able to control effects and whatever for both these tracks. Whatever you insert here is going to be affecting both of these tracks. And that's the process, how you set up buzzes and you um, move the audio tracks around in the mixer. I think this is pretty much enough for you guys to crack on uh, producing your first tracks on Studio One. If you go and navigate, you have uh, their presets. If you go to effects, they have also got a lot of stuff and pretty good stuff, pretty good guitar amp, delay is awesome. They've got the fat channel, which has got a very good compressor, very good EQ, delay, level meter. They've got multiband dynamics. They have got really, really cool stock plugins, guys. So make sure you use them and just make sure you explore as much as you, as you can in Studio One because it's pretty dope. That's what I had planned to talk to you about today. If you've got any questions on Studio One, if I'm able to help, leave me a comment below. I'm happy to reply to your questions and to do another video if needed, or if not, I'll just reply to your comment. So give me the thumbs up, subscribe if you like this video, and if you want to see more videos to come. Thank you.